This is going to be most likely our very last review before we move to France in a few weeks. And it's going to be a very fun one because here we have a Newtonian uh, telescope. And if you guys know us since the very beginning, you know that we love Newtonians. And our very first telescope was an 8-inch Newtonian. So this is very, very exciting uh, to review. And this is the Apertura Carbon Star. It is a 6-inch newt and it has been modernized to make it the best possible beginner Newtonian out there. So why? We'll find out in this video. I'm going to roll a very quick unboxing section here and then we'll image from home on a nebula and in a desert on a galaxy. Let's go. So here we have an Apertura telescope which we are going to unbox now. We have two dovetails. We have the comma corrector. We have the telescope here, which is very, very light. Nice. Ooh, pretty. Wow. Away. Yeah, it's very pretty. We have the focuser here. The front of the scope. It smells new. Yeah. <laughs> and the back here. The telescope comes with two dovetails, uh, one V-style and one D-style. So we have both uh, sizes available. So the small one we plan to put on top and the bottom one, the, uh, the larger the one, one. we plan to put on the bottom as a main dovetail. Very good to have two included. I love this so much. And what do we have then? Uh, we, have we have the comma corrector. The comma corrector here, which is um, a 0 0.95 times corrector which turns this F4 telescope into an F3.8, so even faster, which is great. Because you guys know we love fast, fast telescopes. telescopes. And here it is. We'll place this wow. later as well. I haven't seen one of those in forever. Yeah. <laughs> and we also asked um, to get a batting of mask just so we can uh, easily focus this telescope while we review it but this is a metal batting of mask. Yes. So usually it's are 3D printed, but I think it's... It it's metal? actually, yeah, it's actually yeah. metal. Interesting, so it's very... It very has cool. a bit of a heft to it, but not crazy. So it'll fit really nicely over yeah, the, uh, bend, sure. the front of the telescope. We have some tools here. But of course, some Allen dovetails. wrenches and whatnot for the dovetails. And then lastly, this box. It also came with this letter detailing all the things that were sent to us inside. So here we have two rings, uh, which will go around the telescope to then be able to attach the dovetails. Love the red and black combo style. So here is the telescope ready uh, with the two dovetails. The first thing I told um, Apertura when I was uh, on a Zoom call with them was that you know, design-wise this looks like a shop store, but they explained to me that everything that was built on the telescope is uh, you know, brand new. It's not uh, a copy and paste of a shop star, despite looking like it because it is carbon fiber, so it is black, you know, mm -hmm. gray, and red accents. But whatever design went on this telescope is actually uh, original. So we'll use this tonight and uh, get our first light with it. Very, very impatient. Uh, here you can see what the telescope looks like with a camera attached. Mm -hmm. uh, very cool, so even more red to it and the SIA as well. I am very, very impatient to finally have uh, diffraction bag. spikes again uh, in our images. Oh, and you know how much we love those. Everybody can battle in the comments about that. Yep, <laughs> so let's use that. The mount I used is the AM5 from CW. The telescope is light enough that you don't even need counterweights. This was my very first night and I didn't really want to do the math or take any risk, so I did use one but I removed it on the next night. This is a newt, so you have to collimate it. Honestly, I missed doing that. Yes, it sounds crazy, but scopes like this one are so easy to collimate, unlike some high-end ones <coughs> like Takahashi Epsilon. So this took just one or two minutes. I screwed my dual band filter into the comma corrector, which was very simple, and attached my camera to the scope with a back focus of 55mm. I was afraid that the Apertura scope would feel a bit lonely and scared on its first night, so instead of using my usual Jackery battery, I used this Apertura battery, which is very similar, but is designed for Astro and comes with a billion cables and adapters. I decided to shoot the Tulip Nebula, which I had only done once before and was not too proud of. 
It has the designation SH2101 and can be found about 5871 light years away in the constellation Cygnus. The moon was in the sky, but I didn't care, because now band is life. After one full night, the battery had only used 11% of juice, which was great. I spent 4 nights in total on this target, and carried the entire rig in and out of the house each night. And guess what? I never refocused and never recollimated. It's really cool because they also included some ways to combat uh, stray light and internal reflections um, on this telescope. And how did they do that? So, first of all, the telescope here is built with carbon fiber around a, um, a tube full of baffles. So you can see also you know, knife edge baffles, uh, which should block the internal reflections. And there's also not only this cap here, which is of course going to be removed but of course. Uh, during imaging, but, but a cap on the, uh, on the other end, on the back cell as well, which, so you can hide the back cell completely with this cap, which is very rare to find uh, in reflectors. And this, if you have any issues, you know, with uh, lights go uh, reaching the optics, you can also use this to completely hide the behind here, which is great. I'm guessing it will be very useful for um, imaging from the city. Right, yeah. So I also spent one night in the desert, this time with a friend who also had a 6-inch newt. I don't know why I added the counterweight there again, but there was no point. The night was good and I spent two hours on the M51 Galaxy. One thing I did not talk about earlier is the fact that my scope came with slightly triangular stars, which is a sign of pinched optics, aka the primary mirror is screwed in too tight. This does not mean that yours will also come like this, but I believe Quive had the same issue with his, and so just know that it might be the case for you too. It is an easy but kind of annoying fix, especially if you're a beginner. You'll need to remove the primary mirror and slightly loosen the screws, which I go over a little bit in my How to Clean Your Telescope Mirrors video from a while ago. Also, if you're too scared, you have the choice to not care, that's what I did. Because we're moving away soon and have limited time with the scope, I decided not to care and simply use the magic of Blur Exterminator to fix the stars. Blur X is so powerful nowadays and the pinched optics are minor enough that all the stars can be fixed in 2 seconds and no hassle. Processing M51 was fun and the result turned out great for just 2 hours from Borrow 4. So I have to say, I truly love this telescope, it's amazing. I would definitely want to keep this as my main beginner scope if I were to stay in the US, uh, but uh, because we're moving away, we can't. But this is really, really impressive. Um, so just to wrap up really quick, so it never lost collimation. I just had to collimate once at home and once in the desert. Uh, doesn't matter how many times I took it from here to there, back and forth, it never lost collimation. So, Really, really good on that. Uh, same for the focus. It kept a good focus throughout the night, despite going from a very high temperature to lower temps uh, during the night. Very impressive. It is carbon fiber, so very light and very simple to carry around. And this one is a 6 inch, so very compact for a newt. And uh, honestly, with this dovetail here, you can use that as a handle and it's so simple to carry around. And once again, I love that they include both a small dovetail and a large dovetail. I love when telescope companies do that because it's true, you often need a second one for the top for either as a handle or just to add more stuff on it. So very cool to have too. And lastly, the comma character is very good too. Very simple to use to attach a filter on it. And um, the field of view, even with the ASI 2600, is overall very good. Um, I think the best possible uh, sensor for this would be an ASI or a QHY, for example, 533. And also, of course, this cap here, which can be removed or attached, 
if you have some stray lights, including as well the baffles that will help uh, reduce the light. So I cannot think of a better uh, beginner newt uh, out there. So I really, really love this one. And I think it's my number one so far of all newts. And uh, yeah, overall amazing. So we'll see you guys next time, uh, maybe from here one last time or from our new house in France. We'll see. And uh, good guys.